ladies and gentlemen, uh, as uh, you all know, when you go to a wrestling show, the first person you see before the matches start is the ring announcer. Mel Simons is no stranger being in the ring. Not as a heel, baby-faced manager, but re he refers to himself as being the super mark ring announcer. And how much of a super mark he was when Tanaka and Fuji used to wrestle for the old Tri-WF, that's WWF, and they used to throw salt at each, at, at each other in a ritual. Mel would gather the salt and say, say to me, Tom, I'm sending this to my uncle Oigen in, in Washington, D.C. He works for the FBI. He's going to analyze this. He was a young boy before he made his bar mitzvah when he would attend wrestling matches at the Boston Arena and the old Boston Garden with his dad. We both share a common link attending our first live wrestling event. New England Hall of Famer while Bo Curry was on each one of those bills. Mel has been an announcer for professional wrestling for some 35 years. His favorite time in that position was working for our mutual friend, Gil Kowalski. He was seen every week on Channel 25 from Bendel from Boston back in the 80s. When Walter retired from promoting, Mel took up the mic for other wrestling promotions in New England. Professional wrestling is not his only passion. Mel is known as the King of Nostalgia, having authored nine books on such entertainment subjects as old time radio, movies, TV, and humor. His vast knowledge in this field of entertainment has made him a regular weekly guest on WBZ Radio for 33 years. Mel has also caught a gig on cruise lines during the winter months when he's that in the Jewish Elf, the Catskills. He has sailed giving his unique humor to people all on the high seas. Mel also remembers the time he was sailed through the ring himself, and it's in the air, when he was thrown out of the ring by Jimmy Snuka at a Killer Kowalski show landing in the first row. I recall back in 1975, I was visiting Walter, uh, excuse me, Mel, at his home, and we had a guest in the house, and that was Cryboy George Cannon. Crybaby was there when he was with the IWA promotions, which came into New England to run some shows. And we just sat there and talked wrestling for months, for weeks. It seems like months and years, but it was only a few hours. Mel's home is a virtual museum of old-time radio, TV, movies, political, and wrestling memorabilia. And has, he has had the opportunity to grace that museum with Kilo Kowalski, Professor Tanaka, Mr. Fuji, John Studd, among others, who he counts as his personal friends. Mel Simons is an old, is old school, not just as an interest in the field of entertainment, but how he projects humor. No cheap shots here. He delights in making people laugh without the use of profanity or breaking the second commandment, taking the Lord's name in vain. I am delighted and proud to welcome my friend of 40 years, Mel Simons, into the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. How many of you folks here have ever seen me before? Would you raise your hand? Mm -hmm. How many of you have never seen me before? How many could care less if you never see me again? <laughs> a lot of hands. A lot of hands with that. As Tom mentioned in that lovely introduction, I was uh, Kelly Kowalski's ring announcer for many, many years. How many of you remember Walter Kelly Kowalski? <laughs> We'd be delighted to hear your response. Uh, in addition to being his ring announcer for all those years, we became great pals. 
Walter was the exact opposite in real life as to the miserable character that he portrayed on television. Just a lovely, lovely gentleman with a wonderful sense of humor. He loved when I would tell him stories. And I find it so important to humor these days with all the craziness going on in the world these days. I tell you about three astronauts that are about to go into outer space and they're being examined by the doctor. And the doctor says to them, gentlemen, the three of you are going, in, going to go into outer space farther than any astronaut has ever gone. As a result, you will need a special examination. I'm going to place a stethoscope against your heart and mention a name. We'll hear the reaction that your heartbeat has. So the doctor places the stethoscope against the first astronaut's heart, and he says, Angelina Jolie. And the heart goes, tick 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 He says, Sharon Stone. And the heart goes, tick 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 He says, your wife. And the heart goes, tick gut tick gut tick The doctor says, that's fine, that's perfect. Sit over there. Second astronaut, Angelina Jolie. tick 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 Sharon Stone. tick 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 Your wife. Dig, gut dig, gut dig. The doctor says, that's fine, that's perfect. Sit over there with that other astronaut. Third astronaut, Angelina Jolie. Dig, gut dig, gut dig. He says, Sharon Stone. Dig, gut dig, gut dig. He said, your wife. Dig, gut dig, gut dig. The doctor says, I don't understand this at all. He said, sit over there with those other fellas. He said, over there with those other fellas. Dig, 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 death of the electric chair. An Irishman, a Polish guy, and uh, an Italian gentleman. The Irishman is first. They sit him in the electric chair, they strap him and they put the dome on, and they say to the Irish fellow, before the, before the execution opposes the switch, do you have anything to say? The little, little Irish fellow said, I have absolutely nothing to say, nothing at all. The execution opposes the switch, Folks, it malfunctions, it doesn't work. Now by law, they've got to let him go free. So they let the Irish guy go free. The Italian gentleman is next. They sit him in the electric chair, they strap him in, they put the dome on. They say, do you have anything to say? The Italian fellow says, I got nothing to say, nothing at all. The executioner pulls the switch again, something goes wrong, it doesn't work. They let the Italian fellow go free. The Polish guy is next. They sit him in the electric chair, they strap him and they put the dome on. They say, do you have anything to say? He said, yeah, the chair is unplugged. <laughs> Thank you. You're good on you. I'm going to take you on the road with me. Okay. You got a deal. Lady goes to the doctor for an examination. She comes home. The husband runs over to her. The husband says, what did the doctor say? The woman said, the doctor said I have a beautiful bosom. In fact, the doctor said I have the body of a 40-year-old. The husband said, did he say anything about your 81-year-old ass? She said, your name never came up in the conversation. People want to laugh. No trivia, no, 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 that's BC, BC, thank you for asking. Uh, two guys are, uh, two guys are at a bar. It's two o'clock in the morning. One guy says, my God, it's two o'clock in the morning. My wife is gonna kill me when I get home. The other guy says, no, do like I tell you. I guarantee there'll be no problem. He says, I know it's late, so when you get home, sneak into the house, sneak upstairs, sneak into the bedroom, get in bed, make wild, passionate love. She'll never be angry. He says, that's a good idea, I'm gonna do it. So the guy goes home, he sneaks into the house, he sneaks upstairs, he sneaks into the bedroom, he gets in bed, he makes wild, passionate love. When he finishes, he goes into the bathroom and there's his wife. She said, shh, mother's sleeping over. <laughs> over here they understand, over here they're not too sure. <laughs> Folks, I am, I am just so happy to be with you. 
Uh, I want to thank Tom once again for that nice introduction. I want to thank Joe Bruin, who's done a great job. This guy just got the joke over here in the last year. Thank you very much. I'll talk a little slower next time I'm here. Thank you all very, very much. I really appreciate it.